Uh, back to some of these big ideas, uh, we talk about organization. There are many ways to organize uh, concepts in biology, and it even goes back to chemistry. And so on, on this chart right here, uh, you can see we have uh, the basic structure of organization uh, and how it relates to life. So we have subatomic particles, which you should have hopefully learned something about in the past, electrons, protons, neutrons. It can get even smaller than that. You might be familiar with things like quarks uh, that make up the, the subatomic particles. They are even smaller. Uh, and then there is even things called strings, string theory, which is still trying to be ironed out, more of a physics concept than anything uh, that can make up the quarks. And so things can get smaller than that. Uh, we are going to touch on uh, the subatomic particles with the protons, neutrons, electrons, but we're going to discuss how that gets used to make atoms. And so that's another chemistry concept. So those make atoms. Uh, and then those atoms get put together in some form or, uh, into molecules and compounds. Uh, so two or more atoms, sometimes it's as simple as uh, H2O or oxygen, uh, all in molecular format. They could be the same elements, two or more, or they could be different elements uh, working together as a compound. Uh, then those things get built up into organelles. And organelles are the building blocks of cells. And so when we move up to actual organelles, uh, they are the different parts of a cell. So when we talk about cell parts during our cell unit later on in uh, first semester, organelles are those cell parts, and they get used to make up cells. Cells get used to make up then tissues because there are different types of um, there are different types of cells making up a tissue all working together to make up um, muscle tissue, nervous tissue, so on and so forth. Uh, then those tissues uh, get used to make up organs. Lost my cursor now. There it is. Uh, make up organs, and then organs make up organ systems, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Those organ systems then work together to put together a, a multi-celled organism uh, made up of all these working components. And then uh, we're actually going to probably finish up near the end of the year with some ecology where we talk about how these multicellular organisms uh, work together as populations, uh, living together in communities, and how all those different communities function to make up the, the ecosystem, and then how all the life on Earth exists in a big giant uh, biosphere, bio referring to uh, the life sphere, the life portion of the Earth, which could be found in... Uh, the air, the water, the land, uh, all can be uh, parts of the biosphere. And so we will start small this year with uh, some biochemistry and work our way up from there. Life then uh, can be organized a little bit further into something probably familiar to you uh, when it comes to uh, the kingdoms. And so you might have learned in the past there are five kingdoms. Most scientists nowadays uh, discuss how they're uh, probably are more like six kingdoms that the bacteria as a kingdom uh, has been split into the archaebacteria uh, versus the eubacteria. We'll discuss a little bit later on probably some of the differences and uh, I believe uh, Mr. Hoffman discusses some of those differences in BBG quite a bit more. Um, so the bacteria have been split to make now six total kingdoms, uh, the, the protists, the fungi, the plants, and the animals. Uh, from there then are uh, some, you'll see the word eukaryotic, that means they do have a nucleus, uh, and so all of those have a nucleus uh, uh, in their cells, whereas the uh, archaeobacteria and the eubacteria do not have a nucleus and are purely uh, unicellular, single-celled organisms. So we divide all of life into these subcategories that we call kingdoms, but uh, a more a uh, popular organization type is this concept of domains. Uh, this has been certainly getting some more traction in the scientific world in terms of how we organize life. And you'll see a lot of similarities. It's really the same living organisms on the planet, but how we organize them into these different concepts um, is just a way to, to sort things out so hopefully the, the rest of the world can understand what we're talking about. And so here we've got uh, still the bacteria as a group and you'll see some connections between the eubacteria and the bacteria so those things kind of uh, have some similarities and the archaea are really just the archaebacteria right here and then they've taken 
all of these eukaryotic organisms and we've taken them and put them into a domain called the eukaryota. And if we move ahead here, you can see um, how the three domain system has a lot of overlap between the six kingdom system and the traditional five kingdom system many of us learned when we were uh, in middle school and, and freshman biology. So you can see that the, the bacteria go right down into this traditional, um, all the bacteria were kind of put into a, a, a kingdom called the Monera kingdom in the past. Uh, the archaea would have been right down in there as well, but now the, the eukarya or eukaryota domain consists of the, the traditional protists, plants, so those all come up into that uh, domain now because they are all eukaryotic cells. All the cells of these organisms, these multicellular organisms, have uh, a nucleus uh, around their DNA and help uh, further organize them. And so this is just another way that life is uh, organized for us to hopefully better understand it. So you might be familiar with the kingdoms, five or six uh, kingdom system, but I'm guessing for a lot of us the domains are new, but it's really just the same old life organized in a slightly different way. All right, we'll continue this uh, lecture on uh, looking at a few more major themes in biology. We've gotten through kind of big idea one and two. Uh, there are a few more out there. Uh, the uh, concept of reproduction, growth, and development is something that we will certainly touch on in our class, but also will be touched on in BBG. Uh, reproduction, growth, and development is something that we covered in a previous biology class, if you took it here at HUHS. Um, but the concept of passing uh, one's DNA on um, their genetic information on something certainly that gets tied into the BBG class quite a bit more and so I'll do a little bit of uh, overlap with that just to make sure that we've all uh, got it on the same page but that'll be something that Mr. Hoffman spends quite a bit of time on and I will spend a lot of time in this area um, structure and function in plants and animals and so we'll work all that stuff together uh, between BBG and uh, AP biology to get at big idea number three, living systems store in the form of usually DNA, uh, retrieve, and we'll get into lots of different ways that we can get at that information, uh, transmit, how do we pass that information on from one part of the cell or one part of the body to another, and then respond to that information to maintain homeostasis. And so uh, once we kind of get some of these ideas of homeostasis underway, we'll be able to see that we are able to use the information gathered um, from the body to help maintain homeostasis, homeostasis uh, and maintain all those life processes. Uh, like I said, we'll probably finish up the year with the concept of ecology. That's something that we did a little bit in the past. If you remember Tri Lakes uh, type experience, uh, the bass uh, population uh, from freshman biology is decreasing. What can we do to try to help um, the, the community deal with uh, the decreasing bass population? Uh, that ties into some ecology stuff. And so uh, we'll look at interactions among, among living uh, organisms and populations to get at this big idea number four uh, for the AP Biology curriculum, that biological systems uh, interact. So it could be within the cell, within the body, uh, but also within the community, how different organisms interact with one another and how these systems and their interactions possess, uh, possess complex properties. And so um, we'll get into all the details of that as we go through this year.